Aloha Grace Central family and friends. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Church Online. Uh, today is Communion Sunday, so go ahead, uh, get your elements out. Uh, I'm using non bread this morning uh, for our bread and got some sort of juice here for the cup. Hey, listen, uh, happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. Happy Father's Day. And dads, listen up. We have a gift for you. So go ahead and click on that connect button. Um, there's just a few fields uh, for you to fill out. And we're going to mail you a, a gift here from myself, from Grace Central. And just to honor the dads here this morning. Listen, we're not in a rush this morning. So go ahead and take your time. Um, we're going to give probably two minutes here this morning to gather your communion elements. Dads, to fill out uh, your free gift uh, coming to you this week. In honor of our dads, I mean, this is a day to celebrate. Uh, without our fathers, we wouldn't be here. Um, we wouldn't. Uh, also, if you haven't invited a friend yet, uh, we got about 90 seconds till we start. Go ahead and click on that invite button and go ahead and invite those uh, here online to join us. For those who've been in person, I want to say thank you uh, for making the shift this morning. We're all together, Grace Central fam. We're all together online at our Grace Central online campus. Thank you, thank you for uh, joining in. Um, even right now, go ahead, if you haven't, say hello uh, to one another. Go ahead and sign in. Um, if you haven't signed in yet, go ahead and just take the next 30 seconds. Go ahead and sign in. Type in the chat where you're joining in from. Um, it would be interesting to see someone. Hey, I'm at the beach this morning, uh, tuning in to church online at the beach, wherever you're at, at home, at a friend's house, family's house, ready to celebrate Father's Day. Go ahead and uh, type it in the chat this morning. Send your greetings. Um, got Lazarus there in the background. Thank you, Chris and Alex for being here. Um, celebrating Father's Day weekend uh, here with our Grace Central famine friends. Uh, let's go ahead and, and start our time in worshiping God together. Grace Central fam, let's go ahead, stand to your feet, um, take the dishes, that last cup of coffee uh, on the kitchen table, and let's go ahead and worship our awesome God.
Grace Central. We're so glad you're here and would like to ask you to take a few moments to fill out our connection card found at our website, highgracecentral.org. By filling out this card, you can connect with others, join a grace group, and also let us know if any prayer requests you and your loved ones may have. Remember, we're in this together, so let's stay connected together. Yeah, as I was thinking about tithes and offerings, uh, God reminded me about John 3, 16, how he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. That means he gave everything that he had. And you know, in Deuteronomy, he talks about how we have to love the Lord with all of our hearts, our souls, our minds, our strength. In other words, with all of our being, and loving Him, part of loving Him and loving others is, is giving of ourselves, giving of our tithes and offerings. That's our expression of love back to God. So as we give our tithes and offerings this morning, 
let's give it out of a heart of love, out of a heart of thanksgiving for what is given to us. So can we pray now? Father, we thank you for the love that you give to us, how much you gave all that you have. And Lord, as we give our tithes and offerings right now, we just want to thank you. Say that we love you in giving of, of these, a part of our substance that you entrusted to us. Thank you for everyone that's able to give and, and continue to bless all of us that, that desire to give in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to give online, you can do so by going to our new giving website, gracecentral.churchcenter.com, or by downloading the Church Center app on your mobile device. Church Center is a part of the Planning Center program suite and uses a secure payment processor to handle all giving. If this is your first time giving, click the Give button and enter the amount you'd like to give, as well as a designated fund, frequency, and your contact information. If you've given before, you can log in before entering your gift information. Thank you for partnering with Grace Central as we honor God and make disciples. Aloha once again, Grace Central fam and friends. Happy Father's Day to all our dads out there, um, especially Chris Condi, our worship pastor here at Grace Central, who's a father again. Congratulations, Chris and Amanda, on Isaac Nathaniel Condi. Yes, uh, Condi number four, uh, born in, 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 into their home. Thank you, thank you, uh, Condis. Thank you, dads. Thank you, Grace Central fam and friends for being here. In fact, we want to honor the dads so much. Uh, listen, there's a connect button right there uh, for all the fathers, grandfathers. If you're a dad or an expecting dad, go ahead. If you haven't already yet, click on that connect button. We're going to send you a gift card, a, a just a simple blessing uh, from us here at Grace Central to honor the dads. And listen, I, I know we're all homos, like I don't need anything. Listen, go ahead and click that connect button. Um, you know, we don't do anything uh, with the address. No one's going to come knocking on your door and um, sell anything. We're just going to simply uh, send uh, this gift uh, to you and just receive it. And if not, pass it on. Go ahead and bless someone else. Uh, if you're just tuning in right now uh, for our service online, I want to say thank you. If this is your first time, thank you for joining us for church online this is one of our campuses and i'm so excited today because today grace central we're here together there's no in-person gathering at saint anthony um if you're there somehow um sorry you didn't get the memo uh it's all over social media our website and all the communication went out that we're here together fam we're here all together online and it's been a while since we've been here together so uh, i've decided to do communion towards the end of service today so go ahead and grab uh, the elements to take communion any piece of bread that you'd consider bread and uh, whatever uh, choice of beverage to put in your cup to take uh, uh, as the cup later on uh, during service uh, if it's okay we're gonna go ahead and jump right on in at the theme verse we're concluding our series family and friends romans chapter 12 verse 9 says don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong and hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. If you missed the last two weeks, go ahead and catch up online for the past sermons. We talked about blessing one another, not blasting, that we're called to bless and not blast, that we are called as a people of God to encourage one another, to build one another up, not tear one another down and discourage one another. We're called as a people of God to assume the best, and not the worst in the others. And here's the thing, and you've heard me say it last week, and I believe it's gonna be a theme throughout the summer. As we build these friendships, these family relationships that would honor God as we honor one another, is we can disagree without being dishonorable. We don't have to agree on everything. It's okay to disagree, but in our disagreeing with one another, 
we don't have to be dishonorable. We can honor one another, right? Honor, what does it mean? To treat as uncommon, to treat as precious, valuable. And the scriptures teach us to honor one another, to outdo one another in honoring one another. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, God, for this Father's Day. And Lord, we just ask a blessing upon every single father, every single dad today. Lord, we thank you for the call on their lives uh, to be a father. And Lord, I pray for your spirit to encourage them, to strengthen them, to continue to do uh, their very best in raising up their children in a way that's honoring unto you. And God, I just pray for those of us who don't have our dads or never knew our dads. And today may be a difficult day because of um, strange relationships with our fathers. Lord, I pray for your comfort. I pray for your peace. I pray for your spirit right now to be manifested with those of us, Lord, who today could be just one of those difficult days. And Lord, I pray that you would minister to all of us your word, your word, by your spirit, God, that we can be the people of God that you've called us to be. Bring peace, bring hope, and bring joy that only you can bring. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and type it in the chat. If you agree with that prayer, go ahead and type Amen. And you know, in concluding this series, I wanted to see who does Jesus call his family? Right? We know that the Heavenly Father is his father. But who's his mother? Who's his brother? Who's his sister? And many of you know what I'm alluding to and leading up to. There's portions of scripture in the Gospels that Jesus, when confronted or attempted to be confronted by Mary and Jesus' brothers, um, I believe the scriptures kind of um, indicate that the religious leaders were talking to Mary and the brothers of, of Jesus, the half-brothers of Jesus, to conspire that Jesus was, you know, out of his mind. And what is he doing proclaiming that, you know, he's the Son of God and doing all these miracles, healing on the Sabbath. And here was Mary and Jesus' brothers coming to pull him out as Jesus was teaching some of the people within the crowd. Look at Mark chapter 3, verse 31. And his mother and his brothers came. And standing outside, they sent to him and called him. He was calling him out of that meeting. And the crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And Jesus answered them, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at, about at those who sat around him, Jesus said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother that's who he calls his family that's whom he calls brother and sister for those who do the will of god if you're here this morning you're a follower you're a believer you're a disciple and you're doing the will of god jesus calls you into his family he calls you brother he calls you sister and what is the will of God? I believe part of the will of God is to know Him and for Him to be made known to all those around us. And I truly believe part of His will in knowing Him and telling others is to know Him in community, in the context of relationships with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And once again, I want to say thank you, Grace Central fam, for being here all together. I believe that's part of the will of God. We value relationship with God. And we can't have that relationship with God without having that relationship with one another. Let's look at a portion of scripture at the first century church. The first believers in Acts chapter 2. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open up to Acts chapter 2. These are the first disciples um, after Jesus ascended onto heaven. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. We're going to do that here in a short bit. We're going to break bread together, remembering what Jesus did to pause long enough in our lives to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, that He paid the debt that we could not repay back unto God because of our sins. 
See, they were devoted. They were committed. They were disciplined to the teachings of the apostles. Awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. What a beautiful display of community, of fellowship, of family. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. Again, another reference to breaking bread, always remembering. That's why uh, communion, Holy Communion, is one of the holy sacraments that we observe. And here at Grace Central, we observe at least once a month. Breaking of bread in their homes. They receive their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. Now let me ask you, does that sound like your life? Does it sound like your life? And here's the thing, I'm not putting us down, I'm not putting anyone down. I just want to give the opportunity today, the possibility to have family and friends in such a way that we are in a strong community devoted, disciplined, committed to following God, to honoring God, honoring one another. That we could be in a community where there's signs and wonders and we're like, oh, God is so awesome. Why? Because God is doing a great thing in so-and-so's life and I celebrate with them. We can have this sort of community where God is adding to his family. Day by day, those who are finding the hope of Christ, discovering the love of Christ in their lives. Grace Central, I believe that's the call of God on our lives. That's who we're called to be right here. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. That's why one of our values here is, is community. That's why we have grace groups that meet throughout the week. That's why we're here all online together. And those who are meeting in person, that's why we come on those Sundays to come and worship God together. Why we value community, we value one another, we value the relationships that God has given us and to grow in them. Why? Because all our relationships always point us back to the most important relationship and that's our relationship with God. And that relationship with God is not to be done by ourselves but to come alongside other brothers and sisters other disciples, believers, and worshipers of God in the context of community. It's a shared relationship with Jesus. Now let me ask you this. Do you have that sort of community? Do you have those that you can call family and friends that are concerned about your spiritual well-being? I believe there are eternal ramifications. And I believe today is the day and this is the season, th these summer months, to grow in community, that we would not withhold God from unleashing the blessings that He wants to bless you and I with. Truly believe that. I just want to pause right here and just acknowledge how, how we do friends have changed over the years, right? Relationships, friendships have changed over the years. I remember growing up, and I'm, I'm going to date myself, and I don't want to go way, way, way back, but I remember growing up, those who I called friends, I had to leave my house, take my bike, and go meet my friends at the park. Or they would come over to my house, or I would go over to their house, and they would ride their skateboards. I would ride you know, my bike, and we would play ball, we would play basketball at the parks. Or I remember at times, we would ride our bikes to Hawaiian Bryans, all those who have the 808 who grew up here in the islands. Do you remember the initial Hawaiian Bryans, their original location there? On, I believe it's Keomoku Street where a Ross Dress for Less is currently at. Shh, don't tell my mom that you know, she thought that I was out with the kids riding our bikes in the neighborhood, but we actually went beyond a neighborhood or two uh, to play video games together at Hawaiian Brian's Billiards. But today, today how we do relationships have changed. Um, I don't want to go too far back, but let's start at the invention of the telephone. 
right? You did not need to leave your comfort of your home to go and have a conversation and relate and develop a friendship with someone. Uh, you could do it in your home with the telephone. And then the invention of the answering machine. You remember the answering machine? We just call it voicemail now. There was this answering machine that would answer your phone and you could actually screen your calls, right? You wait till the person left a message on the answering machine and you decide, oh, do I want to pick it up? Do I want to have this conversation with this person or not? You begin to screen the call. Well, remember caller ID? When caller ID first came out, you had to pay. You had to pay for that service on your phone to have caller ID. And when you looked, it's like, oh, it's PJ calling again. Oh, yeah, let's not. Um, I can go straight to the answering machine. I remember paying $9.99 for uh, caller ID. And then you could pay an extra $4.99 or whatever it was for, um, what is that called? Caller block ID. So it doesn't show you and your name when you call your family member or your friends. And it just says no ID, right? Or unknown ID. And you had to pay for that extra service. Today, now, what do we do? We look at one another's Instagram account and we look at the posts and we double click to stay in touch. And we're, you know, relating to one another, developing friendship through social media. Wow, how times have changed. Or texting one another, right? Has this ever happened to you? Hey, you know, been thinking about you. Hey, let's do lunch sometime or grab a cup of coffee. And, you know, you text back. Yeah, that would be great. And you text one another back and forth. And nothing really happens because we're too busy. We're too busy to develop relationships. I want to encourage Great Central fam that God has called us to honor him and to honor one another by developing these family relationships, these friendships that are honoring unto Him. Let's take the time. I want to ask you, do you have that community of family and friends? The, the community of family and friends that honor God, that challenge you to fulfill your God-given purpose and destiny in Him. That would encourage you during your times of discouragement, or depression to say, hey, that there is a God that's with you. And if he is with you, he is for you. And if he is for you, whom can be against you? To remind you that, man, God loves you so much. His grace is sufficient for you. In fact, just pause right now. Tell the person next to you that God loves you, that Jesus loves you, that he's for you. Go ahead and type something encouraging in the chat to someone today. Man, we need to do that. We need to be that spiritual family. We need to be that friend onto one another that builds one another up outdoing one another and honoring one another because i'm going to say this man if not you're missing out you're missing out yeah for all of eternity but eternity begins today eternity is now if you don't have that community of family and friends that are encouraging i, I want to encourage you you can find it here. You can even find it virtually. This is 2021. We can do these relationships virtually. I want to go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, in the TCV version. Today's current version. Uh, I just want to say this is not from the Bible. This is more for humor and illuminating the text. All right, the TCV. The Christians were devoted to themselves and occasionally got to church service when they had time. Fat chance to catch them in group. No one was filled with awe because there were no signs and wonders being performed by the believers. Very few of the believers were together and they had almost nothing in common because they had no real time with each other. If they sold something, they used the money to buy something better for themselves. They ate on the run, they kept to themselves, and were too rushed to enjoy one another or give praise to God. They claimed to love God, but they didn't really love each other, and they left, they felt and left very, they felt very empty and alone. As a result, most people disliked them, and very few people ever came to know the hope and love of Christ. Today's current 
version. Ouch. <laughs> Go ahead and type in the chat. Ouch. You can do that. Yeah. Ouch. And this is not, again, to dog anyone. And um, this. This is where we're at today. Uh, you can go ahead and put in the chat, shake my head emoji. This is a slight exaggeration, but it's not too far off, isn't it? And the sad news today, and you know, as a pastor, as a believer and a follower and worshiper of Christ, I'm saddened in America that the average church service attendance for a believer, for a Christian, is once a month. Once a month is the average. And those in a discipleship a group, community, we call them grace groups here at Grace Central, it's less than that. And that saddens me. How can we grow in our faith? How can we develop our relationship with the Holy and righteous God how can we discover his grace and mercy when we're gathering together just for an hour a month together sharing our relationship with Christ with one another for an hour a month some of us already this morning have spent that hour on social media and for most days you know don't just look down on those who are on social media we might spend an hour or more on watching Korean drama. And yet the average, the average attendance to come together and fellowship together is one hour. One hour a month. I want to challenge us, Grace Central. And I, I, want to, I want to include you, family and friends who are joining in. Man, what, let's be committed and devoted to be that community that honors God, that hates evil and clings on to what is good, honoring one another, not pretending to love one another, but to love one another in a way that's honoring unto God. The same way how God loves us, that we can love one another. I believe we're called to be that community to mourn when one mourns uh, and grieves through the, through the loss of a loved one. That we'd mourn together, grieve together. When someone has an accomplishment, right, when the kids are promoted from one grade to another, that we'd celebrate graduations and promotions and achievements with one another. That there would be no need amongst the body of Christ. Why? Because we're always helping one another out. That there'll be, we're meeting one another's needs and the community's needs, that there'll be no needs because we're helping one another. We're that devoted community of believers, spiritually encouraging one another. I remember one of Christina's friends uh, one day, a couple years ago, said, No, I noticed some um, uh, Kid Central's running out of supplies. Listen, I got some cleaning supplies at home that I'd like to bring one day. Can I donate them? And Christina and the team says, yeah, sure, bring in that box. And I remember Christina and I, you know, we, we wanted um, some cleaning supplies personally. And, you know, this person dropped out this huge box of cleaning supplies uh, for Kids Central, for our kids ministry. And I remember Christina says, oh, I would love these products. And her friend said, oh, would you want some? And we were so ecstatic to say yes. And we went to pick up the box putting it into the minivan, box after box after box of cleaning supplies, sprays, gizmos and gadgets and thingamabobs. And we we're filling it up and we're like, wow, this is the community that, that, that we thrive on. Spiritual family, spiritual friends that help one another out. I still think um, we're running on that supply of, of cleaning supplies. We had so much. Thank you. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Listen, God is so good that we cannot, cannot enjoy Him alone. This is to be a shared relationship with one another. We need community and we need one another. We're better together. We're stronger together. Come on, type it in the chat. We're better together. We're in this together. We're stronger together. There needs to be some sort of unity. Listen, we can uh, disagree on the various many issues we can disagree on. But our, our unity, our unity where we come together is under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
that with one heart, right, one faith, we're honoring God together by honoring one another. I like what I said last week, and I don't know if I said it already here earlier. We can disagree without being dishonoring. And we're here to honor God together. Look what Matthew 18, 20 says, Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I amongst them. Listen, we got to be dependent on God. we got to be dependent on His grace, His mercy, on His presence. And secondly, we need to be dependent on one another. We need one another. Without one another, we're incomplete. We need to be dependent on God, and we need to be dependent on one another. Because where two or three, where two or three are gathered, there I am amongst them. Come on, go ahead and type in a chat. Amen. Chi hu, right on, or hit that heart emoji or whatever other emojis there are, that clap emoji. Just go ahead and, and click on that if you agree. We're, we're engaging here this morning. Thank you, thank you for engaging this morning where two or three are gathered. There I am in their midst. Unfortunately, in the country that we live in and the times we live in today, our country, it's almost as if worship's independence, right? It's like, I can do it on my own and I don't need you. The issue with that is in order to be a follower of Christ, a disciple of Christ, we need one another. We're called to grow our faith and our relationship with God with one another in community, that we're dependent on one another as we lean and depend on God together. Listen, I know, I know, I know we need a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That is so important, but it's very incomplete. Listen, you cannot have your relationship with God writing the coattails of your grandma's relationship with God or your dad's relationship with God or your friend's relationship with God. You need your own personal relationship with God, but that's incomplete. A more complete and biblical definition of a relationship with God is to be done in the context of a shared community, a shared relationship done in community with one another. That's what we're called to do. Go ahead and grab your elements. Um, we're going to take communion here. And as I share my final two thoughts as we close this morning. The first is we need to share Jesus with other believers. Look at what Hebrews 10, 24 says. Let us consider how to stir one another to love and good deeds, good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Let me ask you this. Do you have this? Do you have family and friends that encourage you as you gather together towards love and good works? And I know we have our different groups, right? We have our friends that we go bowling with, fishing with. But do we have the friends that encourage us towards spiritual matters that we go bowling and fishing together? Today, I believe we can have that. Today, I believe we can shift our priorities and say, God, I need to invest in relationships. And I want to say this. We need to be present. There's something about presence right being there being together being here together online not just watching the recording and if you're watching the recording that's great because if you had something earlier but for those of us who are here live streaming together there's something about being here together online together in person together in one another's lives I just want to pause right here, acknowledge some of my friends. Here are some of my friends whom I consider my family. Some of them are my pastor friends, pastor families. Uh, some of them are a community of believers. These are the people who I sincerely call my family and my friends. There's a picture there uh, you might have seen of the three J's. Uh, my two good buddies were on three decades of developing relationships years and years of praying with one another helping one another out we're all married and you saw us on the beach there with our kids three guys with 11 kids wow talk about years and years and in investing and encouraging one another I thank God for Grace Central. I want to thank you, Grace Central, for being that awesome spiritual family, 
for not forsaking meeting together. Dads, thank you for coming and joining here. I know it's Father's Day. We're ready to go and celebrate and honor dads. Thank you for being here, just pausing long enough to honor our Heavenly Father. Presence is so important. You know, it's, it's so good to hear and get the text, hey, I'm praying for you, I'm rooting for you. Uh, but it, there's another whole nother level when someone comes with you, whether on the phone, FaceTiming one another, or in person, putting that hand on the shoulder and praying for that person with them. Where two or three are gathered, there I am in their midst. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you today. Pray with someone. If we know that prayer is so powerful and effective, man, we need to be using it. We need to utilize it. Today, I'm challenging you and I. Pray with someone and for someone today. Pray with them. There's nothing like being in the presence. Go ahead and click that prayer emoji or clap emoji again to say right on, spot on. And I get it, we're busy, we're busy, we're all busy, I get it. Um, being married, six kids, leading the church, I have a hard time sometimes leading myself, but I've incorporated that discipline to lead myself, to lead my family, lead church, lead my family and friends to honor God as we honor one another. We're all busy, but listen, we. We're never too busy. I always tell people, I'm never too busy for those who I call family and friends. And I want to encourage you, don't be too busy. You can't be too busy for God. You can't be too busy for family. You can't be too busy for friends, for this sort of community in Acts chapter 2. And listen, I just want to encourage you to be committed and to fight for family and friends. We need to fight for that, for these relationships. Because for those of us who are raising up the next generation, they're watching us. And if we're not developing these relationships and they're watching us, don't be surprised that the next generation would rise up and not know God and not know what it means to have relationships with family and friends. Secondly, we need to share Jesus with a community of people. I want to end with a funny story this morning. Um, I thought I, I, I saw my friend Chris Chow. Many of you guys have heard already my friend Chris. Chris is the one who uh, led me to the Lord uh, initially. There was a group of people, it was a team effort, but I believe he was the leading front runner and leading me to know Jesus. And I remember going at the grocery store. I was like, hey, Chris, hey, Chris. And then the guy turned around and he goes, huh, what? And I was like, oh, sorry, I thought you were my friend Chris. And I was looking, you know, eyeing him out and, you know, he was wearing the mask and from behind, he looked like Chris. Anyways, I saw the same guy weeks later at Costco. And there at Costco, I saw the same guy, he was wearing the same shoes, same mask. And I was wondering, do I approach him and say, hey, remember me? I thought I, I, thought I was that guy who thought that, you know, you were my friend, Chris. And I decided not to. But that same day, minutes later, I ran into the real Chris Chow. Here's a picture of Chris and his son. Um, we took a selfie there at Costco and we got reacquainted uh, once again. If it wasn't for Chris sharing Jesus with me, I do not know where I would be today. I definitely would not be here with you and worshiping with you today. So I say this, share Jesus with a community of other people that are outside of the Grace Central fam. Listen, they too need the same grace that God has given us, that we need that same grace, the same hope that we have in Jesus Christ. God has called us to share with extended family and friends. And I really thank God for the Chris Charles of the world who are bold enough and who are confident enough in the gospel to share Jesus. It's all about sharing, 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 sharing. And listen, don't be weird about it when we share, right? How art thy brother? And, you know, I don't have a brother. And who's art? I just talk normal. Everyone, listen, we go through the same stuff in life. Just talk about life in general and introduce Jesus 
love of your life to all those around you. Share, 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 share Jesus with someone. And when I close with this, I want to honor my dad. Here's a picture of me in my high school graduation day and, and my dad. If my father was alive today, he would be 109 years old. And he passed um, years ago, just soon after this picture was taken, actually. It's the next year. And I thank God for spiritual family and spiritual friends who've walked with me over the years through my daddy issues that my heart, my soul can be healed, that I can find forgiveness, find healing of past hurts, mending my relationship, even though my dad is no longer alive here, just mending that relationship with him. I'm really thankful for spiritual family, for spiritual friends, that I can find freedom from my guilt and shame. We all need family and friends. Go ahead and grab your elements. We need family. We need friends. You and I were created for relationships. And as we prepare to break bread together and share this moment with one another and remembering Christ, I just want to pray. For some of us here this morning, we need deeper and more meaningful relationship with others. For some of us here this morning, I believe God has just been speaking to you and saying, hey, listen, I need to come alongside other community of believers to get in a group. And there's a few of you, God has been already tugging on your heart to lead a group. I'm just going to leave it at that. You need to be leading a group. Go ahead and let us know. Let anyone on the team, leadership team here know. Let Grace Central know. I want to start my own group creating this thing that you've called community. Don't serve God by yourself. Don't know God by yourself. We need one another. And I want to pray this morning. And, and, you know, communion is for the family of believers. If you're here this morning, you're not a believer, and you want to invite Jesus into your heart, please, by all means, go ahead and just say, Jesus, come and be my God. And just turn from your ways and, and your sins and just ask God for forgiveness. The scriptures teach us that He is faithful and just. When we ask for forgiveness, He forgives us. No questions asked. It's like, yeah, He forgives us. He exchanged His righteousness for our unrighteousness. So this morning as we take uh, of communion, may we remember Christ and remember that we're to share our relationship with Christ with one another. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for family and we thank You for friends today. We thank you, Lord, and continue to search our hearts this morning, Lord, and things that we need to adjust in our hearts. By the power of your Holy Spirit this morning, help us to adjust and align to you and your word and your spirit this morning. God, we're reminded of your grace and your love displayed on Calvary's cross when the body that was broken and the blood that was shed, that we can have the forgiveness of sins. Lord, we're reminded how powerful that imagery is. As we break bread together, we're sharing in the fellowship and sharing of our relationship with one another. Although we're in our own homes and uh, our own side of the screen, together, virtually, we're taking communion together, Lord, to remember you and to say thank you for all that you've done and all that you are and all that you continue to do in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for family. We thank you for our friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and take up the bread together. Let's go ahead and take up the cup together. Listen, if you need more time to stay in this atmosphere of faith, as we broke bread together and shared Christ together, in remembering His goodness and His grace. Go ahead and pause. Otherwise, um, Grace Central fam and friends, uh, next week we're back here online. Uh, we're back in person at St. Anthony Retreat Center for those of you who want to worship together in person. Uh, listen, next week we're starting a new series entitled Summer of Faith. 
We're bringing in speakers from all over the world, um, in person and online to really inspire, equip, and teach us and preach to us the text, the good news of Jesus Christ to instill and build our faith. And listen, dads, if you haven't uh, received your um, opportunity to receive a Father's Day gift, go ahead and click on that connect button. This is your last chance. We're going to close it out here in the next five minutes. Uh, go ahead and click on that connect button. Um, we want to get to you a Father's Day gift to honor you this day. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, to all family members and friends. God bless you. May you be a blessing to all those around you. Have a great week. Know that God loves you. We love you. And continue to journey on. We'll see you next week. God bless and mahalo. We'll see you.